Hello and welcome to last stream for the Climate Hackathon. Yes, finally we'll know who's yeah. won. <laughs> my name is Kim. And my name is Goran. We are your hosts today also. And uh, yeah, Climate Hackathon, we did it. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, teams put a lot of effort and energy this, this week. We've seen great solutions from you. And uh, our participating non-government uh, organization and non-profits will be really happy to, to see your uh, solutions. Um, we are happy that you joined this hackathon for, for good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, let's, let's continue with program to see who the winners are today. Uh, while you watch, you can use hashtag hack the climate, post on social media where are you watching from. If you are winners, yeah, post something. How, how are you celebrating the, the win? So, <clears throat> yeah, we received a few videos from, from the participants. So let's have a quick, quick uh, look at the experiences we've had yeah. during the week yeah. and what they say about the hackathon. Hello everyone, my name is Jay and I took part in a hackathon called Hack the Climate Hackathon organized by Stratic and Microsoft. I learned a lot, to be honest, I made new friends through this hackathon, be it from Stratic or Microsoft. So I learned a lot and what can I say, climate change is real and it's here and we need to do something about it and people like Bill Gates, David Attenborough, and many more are creating those awareness and we need to listen to them. So yeah, it's here. We need to do something about it. And kudos goes to team Microsoft and Stratic organizing this type of hackathon. Most importantly, finding, finding a solution. So yeah, I enjoyed a lot. Uh, have a good one. Bye bye. Awesome. Yeah. We got two more. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Oded. I'm originally from Israel, currently living in central Switzerland. I'm 34, soon to be 35. Currently, I do a boot camp, a full stack boot camp. And uh, yeah, I signed up to the hackathon because um, I, I think it's a really good um, stimuli to make people cooperate to all the good end that maybe can create good tools that can actually help people and that's, that's, that's the inspiration and I hope to achieve uh, just that to, to be part of something good and to manage to create something useful and I contribute to my group by building the front end. And yeah, that's it. Good luck, everyone. Nice Great. to hear. Yeah. It's nice with the different countries as well. I think that's been one of the big thing here. Yeah. All over the globe. Yeah. Uh, one more video. Hello, all. I am Monica, joining from Copenhagen. In my academic qualifications, I have done my PhD in speech signal processing and currently working as data scientist in Copenhagen Business School. My expertise fields are natural language processing, speech synthesis, and computer vision. I also have some industrial experience where I worked on different client projects related to text and image data. The main motivation to join Hackathon is to present my skills and my knowledge related to machine learning and see if we can team up together and bring a sustainable change in a society so that we can make a better place to live in for our future generation. It's a great opportunity to meet different mentors from Microsoft and work with them and take two guidance from them. This helped me in a both professional and personal level. Why not? It's a great opportunity to meet different people from Microsoft. Great. And strategic, yeah, I would and say. Strategic, yes. <laughs> yeah, nice. Awesome. So getting back to, to our presentation, we have 
few more slides we we need to to mention some uh, some things so uh, hackathon was run uh, on dev post you uh, submitted your uh, projects over there winners on the dev post will be announced after after this live stream and give us an hour or two they will be published uh, this evening right so yeah, and the, this hackathon was brought to you by Stratech and Microsoft together. Yeah, we have our partners and sponsors. So we have Ember, an independent climate and energy think tank focused on accelerating the global electricity transition. We have Subak, an accelerator and data cooperative for climate nonprofits. And we have Startup Wise Guys, mentorship driven accelerator program for early stage startups, providing seed capital, office space, and most important, mentorship. Yes, and then we had additional partners helping us get the message out and get all of you people to participate. And those were Copenhagen Capacity, Tech Barbecue, um, Impactor, HearthX, Hacks, <laughs> Wonder Coders, Food Cafe, Azure and Skona, and Nordic Women in Tech Awards. So thank you so much. Yes. Challenges. Yeah, we had four different tracks with our challenges. So the first one was carbon. So how to go low, low carbon by reducing emissions and cut energy consumption. Uh, we had ecosystem. How do we preserve and protect biodiversity and the health of the world's um, ecosystems? Waste. How do we become more sustainable, sustainable by developing products with zero waste? And water. How to be water positive. That means replenishing more water than we actually use. So, big, big challenges. Yes, and we had uh, real challenges from NGOs and other nonprofits uh, in those tracks. One sad news is that water didn't have any uh, valid submissions in the end. There were yeah. some teams working on that, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, submissions there. Maybe we should organize another hackathon just for water, for water to, yeah, exactly. to kick it off, maybe next time. So today we are announcing winners for those three tracks, carbon ecosystem and waste. Our council. Yes, this is our uh, great council that has worked on um, going through the different submissions and um, making a selection for the judges. So these were the ones screening the first, the first ones. So thank you so much for taking the time and making this happen. Yes, we had the uh, judging criteria, as you know, impact, how much impact would the solution have in solving this uh, challenge? Then feasibility, is it realistic in terms of technology, legal and other aspects? Implementation, how much was done during the hackathon? And innovation, is it innovative, creative? Is it using the latest technology? A huge thank you also goes out to our judges, and they were Baroness Bryony Worthington, who is a cross-bench member of the House of Lords, uh, Jamie Alexander, director at Drawdown Labs, Hampus Jakobson, climate venture capitalist, and Sanjay Potter, managing director and global lead technology sustainability innovation at Accenture. And if you want to read more about our judges and learn more about them, feel free to check out Microsoft Screen Tech blog. Uh, where we put uh, blog posts and interviews with them. Yes. So, prizes. There are two overall prizes, one by Subak, one by Startup Wise Guys. Those prizes will be uh, communicated directly with the teams. So, after the hackathon in the upcoming week or week after, since there is Easter coming, so yeah. some, uh, some holidays, teams will be reached out directly. and. Uh, one team will be offered from Subak uh, this uh, fast track into Subak Fellowship program. And for startup wise guys, they will pick five teams and offer you fast track into their uh, mentorship program. So today we are announcing the track winners. And uh, track winners will receive digital certificate that looks like this uh, <clears throat> after the Hackathon, they will. Yeah, they will also receive a mentorship in the value of 2,000 euros by Stratetech. They will be featured on Microsoft's Green Tech blog. 
And they will also have exclusive interview on Microsoft Learn TV. Also, they will receive Maker Badge, uh, Azure Hero Maker Badge for every team member in team. And what is Maker Badge? Yeah. The recipients of a Maker Badge are recognized as innovators uh, who make meaningful contributions to the community. This ba badge is given to those who embody the maker spirit of, the, uh, of creativity, curiosity, and determination to create projects for societal improvement that help and inspire others. So definitely something to be proud of. Yeah, last line before we go into announcement of winners with our guests. Uh, we have AI for Healthcare uh, Hackathon coming up in the April. Uh, this is... Um, Hackathon focused on AI with a lot of great uh, partners uh, helping out like um, teams will work on the real uh, real cases from hospitals across the across the Europe only 20 teams will be selected for this hackathon feel free to check it out link will be shared in the chat channels okay so who are the winners? Drum rolls! Yeah. We are so we excited! We have some guests! Yeah! Yeah, who will announce the winners. So, can we get guests on the screen? Hello! So, Frank, nice to see you here. Likewise! Hello, Kim! Hello, Goran! Hello! Could you just briefly introduce yourself? I can do that. Happily so, but first off, I think, um, uh, and I might be, be a bit biased, but I want to compliment <laughs> you for the way you uh, have been hosting this hackathon all week long. Really fantastic job. So um, great, great, great work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Frank Hennekens. I'm the CEO at Statitech. Uh, I'm born and raised in the Netherlands, uh, but ended up in Sweden about 20 years ago. And uh, I guess I got positively stuck uh, up here north. Um, uh, deep down, I'm an electrical engineer and always had an extreme passion to make a difference in the world with the help of technology. Hence, it's a, a really true pleasure to be able to, uh, to be here with this hackathon, and uh, which is 100% is, is, uh, about doing just that, making a difference with the help of technology. Yeah. I'm also very, very grateful that Microsoft partnered up with, uh, with us, uh, Stratitech in order to, uh, to be able to, uh, to make this happen and to make this into a reality. Yeah. And if you can just squeeze in one quick sentence about Satitech as such. <laughs> of course. I, um, <laughs> I think you would allow me <laughs> to do, do that. Please <laughs> um, do. We're a knowledge-based IT uh, consulting firm uh, building uh, sustainable data-driven solutions. We work with data analytics, with uh, cloud business applications, uh, as well as application development. Uh, we're currently about 100 people big. And we have um, two offices, one in Malmö uh, in the southern part of Sweden and one uh, up in Stockholm. Uh, and we're still growing. Yeah, we just say we're hiring, right? So check us out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so what do you think about the hackathon and the submissions that have been, or the solutions that have been submitted this week? Uh, it's um, really mind-blowing, I think, uh, looking at it. Uh, it's fantastic to see the engagement of um, so many in this really, really important hackathon. Uh, it's fantastic to see uh, the team setup and constellations, um, some really tr truly global teams that, uh, that got together. Uh, the presentations of the teams shown to me at least that all participants have um, not only put in their a lot of their heads, but also a lot of their hearts, which is, uh, which is fantastic to see. And I must say that I'm really blown away with the quality of the uh, of the end result. So a, a fantastic job done by all teams and all participants in this hackathon. Yeah. So we will not keep our participants waiting anymore. Who is the winner of the carbon track? Am I allowed to say it now? Yes. Now yes, you please. should say it. <laughs> all right. Now we'll go for that. The winner of the 2021. Hack the climate for the carbon track is, and then I was expecting big drum rolls here, but yeah, good, good, good. Methane leaks, unit eight, climate. Wow. Congratulations. And we have a video for them, all right? 
Yes, we will play their, their video now in a second. So, <clears throat> others can also see what... So, hi everyone. Our team worked on the Ember and Subac challenge, which uh, consists in uh, detecting large methane emission events. And as you know, methane is an important uh, greenhouse gas that contributes to climate change. And despite the fact that now satellites are able to detect methane at the planet level, we, there are no uh, data sets that tracks the methane leaks, uh, only a few news articles. So for that reason, we decided to build a tool um, that allows you to uh, monitor such methane events and then be able to get information on them and raise awareness about that kind of events. Uh, Jose will now do a demo of the... Of so we built this tool that can analyze what we detect as the uh, biggest hotspots and probable methane leaks that have happened in the past few weeks. Uh, we have a list that you can choose from, and when you click on any of these hotspots, you will be redirected to an interactive map representing the hotspot and the actual methane map with the concentration levels, as well as any sort of industry, coal mine, power plant, steel plant, or even gas pipeline that could be near it. We also display these simple KPIs and a time series just for ease of use and to get all the data you could possibly want. Uh, just as an example of switching to another hotspot, it will automatically center on the new hotspot and show everything to you. So, Michael? Okay, so regarding the tech stack, uh, we were quite happy to be able to use uh, our Azure Pass. And uh, also we take advantage of this Google Earth engine to, for pre-processing the satellite images. So uh, that was the Google Earth engine was made the, mainly used for the detection and for the pre-processing of the images. Um, then we used Azure Functions to, to download these data regularly into our Azure file storage. And uh, from there, the front end pick, picks it up. Uh, which is deployed in a Docker using a uh, modern uh, front-end Python library called Streamlit. And that, uh, that is what you saw in the, in the demo. Yeah, we hope our tool uh, can help uh, raise awareness about uh, where these leaks occur and uh, reduce the time it takes uh, to find these leaks and that further action can be taken uh, afterwards. Yeah, here are a few links um, to the front end and also to the code that's all pushed in public. And um, yeah, thanks. It's always impressive to see what you managed to do in a, in a few weeks or a few days, right? Yeah, in a s super short time. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, we have was, the we uh, have the um, the judges um, uh, the time. We do. Yeah, exactly. So let's we hear do. what their uh, motivation were. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, more like uh, motivation. Yeah. Scoring. Or comments. Words. Comments. Yeah. <laughs> Reasons behind it. Uh, some of them were uh, creative use of algorithm and satellite imagery for monitoring methane emissions and uh, really like the storyboard. Uh, for one of other comments is, great, you are doing this. Uh, please publish it and uh, make it available publicly. Yeah. Good, so we need to celebrate. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so thank you All for joining, right. Frank. And so then uh, let's, let's see. <clears throat> we... Bye. We also have a runner-up. Yeah, we do. We exactly. decided to announce the runner-ups. And thanks to Microsoft, runner-up teams will also receive the maker badges yes. that we just uh, mentioned. So every team uh, member in the <coughs> runner-up team will re receive it. And for this track, Carbon, the runner-up is. Will you will you uh, drum drum again or? <laughs> I'm drumming. Land Pro. Woohoo! Well done.
Let's see the video. Hi, my name is Matteo, and I'm very proud and happy to introduce you to Land Pro, our entry for the Hectic Climate 2021, the Cool Farm Alliance Challenge. Land Pro is an app that harnesses the power of satellite data and brings them down directly how the land user wants them. Here is the fantastic team that worked on Land Pro in the last five days. Hi, I'm Namrata Dagurung. I recently finished my PhD in physics from ETH Zurich, uh, after which I moved to Germany and working as a data scientist. Hello everyone, my name is Markus Kieger. I live in Zurich, Switzerland. I'm a mechanical engineer, working currently as a full stack developer and mostly on the back end during this project. Hi, I am Jonas. I'm an engineer and a data scientist. I live in Zurich and I participate in Hack the Climate Challenge. Hi, I'm Leticia. I live in Zurich and I'm a data scientist. Hi everyone, my name is Odette Weinberger. I did the front end part. But how does Land Pro work? With three simple steps. Number one, the user selects an area of interest in a simple web map interface. Number two, we use satellite multispectral data to identify homogeneous land cover areas within that area of interest. Number three, we use NDVI and other satellite data to calculate estimations of vegetation CO2 and soil CO2 absorption. Hi, so I'm going to share how I was doing the uh, soil organic carbon estimation. Yes. Um, so first, uh, we get the source or the data from this uh, European Data Center, European Soil Data Center, and we can obtain our data set, which is the soil organic stock all over Europe. So that's sun carbon per hectare for the year 2010 in the layer of 0 to 30 centimeter. For. Now, what we want to do is basically we want only the part of our selected polygon uh, and we want to clip the SOC file for the area of interest. So as you can see here now, we have 15 uh, sets of, oh, you know, what the SOC was for every single, uh, or the mean of SOC was for every single polygon. Right now, LandPro is a simple device that gets the information you need in a simple way. However, it can become much more than that. Look at the live demo here. <laughs> and look at the GitHub folder here. I think that was great as well. He's very enthusiastic. Yeah, it's yeah, impressive. really, really yeah. interesting. Really, really nice. Okay, cool. Uh, so we don't have Timos at the moment. No. Nope. Um, I guess there were some small difficulties connecting or something. So yeah. we will do announcement of the ecosystem track. And for the ecosystem, winner is? Yeah, who is the winner? Should we be a? Purple penguins. Ah. We, we need to shoot this thing again. <laughs> Woo! So let's see the video. Yeah, let's have a look. <laughs> In a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a few seconds. Here we go. Purple pink. Hello world, we are the Purple Penguins from Zolke. This video talks about the solution we built over the last five days. If you want to know more about our team, have a look at our project page. Now, let's get started. Why climate policy radar? Simple. The world is governed by laws and policy. This challenge impacts everything. From food and agriculture, to carbon emissions, energy, natural disasters, and the list can go on and on and on. What is the challenge? Well, as you know, there are lots of countries in the world. These countries generate a lot of laws and policy. 
it's difficult to know what is out there. And on top of this, there is no good way of knowing what works and what doesn't. So, hard to find data and hard to explore. With that in mind, and using the latest artificial intelligence tech in Asia, our solution includes the graphical visualization of the search results, an intelligence similarity index algorithm, and a full text document search. We built a data exploration platform for policy and laws. However, this could be used on other domains, like scientific research to name an example. Before we look at some incredible software, let me tell you about the user journey. In the demo, you will see a policymaker that is tasked to write a new law. Before she starts writing, she will look for existing laws and explore similar laws. Okay, now let's look at some sexy software. I'm a policymaker in Denmark, and I want to legislate on hydro and wind farms. My first step is to find current laws and policies about that. The search results are presented as a graph. Each node is a policy or law. Bigger nodes rank higher against my search term, and the connections between the nodes are based on similarities between the laws and policies. Darker lines show that two policies have a higher degree of similarity. In the comparison page, I can see what makes the two policies similar. You can also see the source of similarity, if it's based on the metadata or on our AI text analytics processes. You can also fine-tune the search results by applying different weights on the similarity algorithm. Finally, let me show you a detailed page. Here I've searched for energy in Australia and I'm looking at the reef policy. I can see similar policy listed and even a word cloud. Hope you enjoyed the demo. For the technical details and the URL to test it out, check out our project page. You will also find about other user journeys and multiple features that could be put on top of this solution. That's it from the Purple Penguins. Ta da! <laughs>
All of the sensors are connected with the Microsoft Azure Cloud, which helps us to compute, store and visualize the data in a dashboard. Yannick Kopp developed the architecture of the project. He has been working in the field of the Internet of Things for more than five years. So at the moment, we are gathering temperature and humidity data every 15 minutes. And this data is directly streamed into my database and from there visualized with Power BI, which makes it very easy for me to create dashboards and also share the results with Benjamin on the scientist side. This is how the infrastructure looks like. We are leveraging the LoRaWAN communication technology to connect sensors over long range with very low power consumption. So we can leave the sensors in the field for years. After the data arrives in the cloud, we store the data and visualize it with Power BI. So at the moment, we are focused on this one single use case, but obviously the field of IoT has much more potential. So we are planning to use many different sensors in many different places to build one giant database for scientists. That means we could also collect data about nesting places for bats, wild bushes for bees, or water quality of ponds. Up to now, all the specialists could assess the value of a garden in terms of biodiversity. Now we can visualize the biodiversity in this garden. And we can get biodiversity closer to the people. We can send them a message. Hey, there was a lot of activity at the pond lo last night. Maybe the frogs are back. Check it out. Nice. Yeah, really, it's really nice cool. Nice to see that they're combining the hardware and software in this case. Yeah, really, really cool. Okay, so that was ecosystem track, yep. right? And uh, we go to the waste track, and for the waste track we have Sherry. Hello. Hello, Sherry. Hello from Copenhagen. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> are you excited? Yes, I'm super excited, and I can see that both our uh, jury and also council member had a really tough time going through all of these interesting pro pro projects to find the winners. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's impressive. Yeah. Um, okay, so who is the winner of the waste track? Wait, 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 wait. Prepare, prepare. Oh, okay, <laughs> but yeah, so, okay, I, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we are ready. Rolls. Rose. Yeah. So, the <laughs> winner of uh, the base track is Eruza. Woo! I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, so let's take a look at the video. Hello, we're Team Eruza. I'm Julia, a UX designer based in LA. For this project, I worked on the UX, UI, and research part. Hey, I'm Arun from Sweden. I run Azure Research and Documentation. And I'm Sarah from Sweden. I've been working with system architecture, ML, and uh, front end. When we teamed up to decide on a challenge, we were amazed by the great deeds of Buy Food with Plastic, whose goal is to tackle hunger and upcycle. This NGO brings food to the most needed in exchange for plastic, that's in turn recycled for new purposes. Currently, bottle counting as well as bookkeeping are done manually, and it can be a very tedious, time-consuming job. Together, we brainstormed to bring up a few solutions to this by implementing a progressive web app and various technologies that would aid the volunteers during their events. In the dashboard, the volunteers can easily see the current state and general information of an ongoing event. They can check their calendar for upcoming events or click here to create a new one. Inputting data can be easily done by opening the camera, taking a picture or uploading one and saving it. All that information goes straight to the database. This can be done with bottles as well as receipts. The information is extracted and some important data is highlighted. The speech to text feature aims to help the volunteer do this process hands free. At the end of the day, all this information is conveniently generated and collected into the impact report. Our solution is based on this mobile app, which can collect data during these events. And to automate the process, we have integrated Azure Community Services, 
collected data is sent to Azure Storage, and from there it can be used to create impact reports. The user can quickly save data uh, with this text-to-speech features like one plastic bag. Nice. And uploading data or taking a picture to count how many bottles are visible. We can also take an image of a receipt and get the text written in the image. And um, feel free to look at our GitHub page with a lot of documentation about the tools we used. Thank you. That was really nice as well. I'm sure they're going to be happy with that solution. Yeah, yeah, it, it was really, really great. And uh, I can say for the waste category, we had a lot of uh, submissions there. Yeah, so it was a uh, tough competition. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what judges commented on this one is that uh, good prototype storyboard solution is really practical. Uh, and good presentation and nice start of the application would love to see how this continues. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's really, cool. really impressive. So then obviously we had runner-ups. Yeah, we have a runner-up for the waste track. And this runner-up is oh. Team Platypus. Hello, my name is Catalina and this is our team hacking for the climate. We are a group of our students from Zealand Academy in Denmark. After going through buy food with plastic needs, we came up with the idea of a mobile phone app to help them in helping others. Our main goal is to reduce the time for volunteers spend with anti waste really fast. So we would like to show the prototype of the application. So we kept, it, we kept it very simple and easy to use. On the home page, there is some motivational data of the number of uh, bottles collected and meals donated. And, and at the bottom, there are the most used and or favorite menu points of the user. The main menu points of the application are events, economy, reports, task management, registration, and settings. And quickly going through, this is how the full prototype looks like. So we created a text recognition uh, to make it possible for the NGO to upload and take pictures of handwritten, handwritten receipts. And yeah, and we made a prototype that will quickly show how the text recognition works. Um, so yeah, here we have the, um, the prototype. Uh, I we chose a receipt that they were using just to see how much uh, is loaded and as you can see here we have um, most of the text from the receipts so the thing we want to do is we want to um, use machine learning to make it possible to separate the different fields in case the text recognition fails, we want uh, it to be able to um, to put in manual receipts as well. And to make that easier, we've done a prototype of this, uh, where we, in the database, we have all the objects that have been bought before, uh, which means that they can just start typing something in here. They choose cereal. Uh, they'll already have the price that they have used uh, most often. They can put in the quantity, and it will calculate the price. and it. And they can add new items, they can also change the price, and save, and save the receipts. So that was everything from us. Thank you very much for your time. Also a good one. Yeah, great. Really, really nice. And uh, those were our winners, but we have one announcement to make. I think we are all winners just by joining this hackathon because uh, something really nice happened and Sherry will let us know about that. And 
Yes, um, I mean, before that, I want to, again, thank you to all of you who are, who actually that, who, who joined us to go through this hackathon. And I mean, spend all of your, your week to, um, to, to, to code on all of these real life scenarios. And, uh, and yes, we all know that this is a, this is a really crucial moment for all of us. Unfortunately, there won't be any vaccine for this issue that we have right now. So we have to try to uh, to do our best to, to do it. Um, we also did from our side uh, try to um, to to make sure that uh, our event is is as green as possible. Uh, so that's why that we also um, planted 1,000 trees to somehow um, uh, offset the carbon footprint that we have to make sure that we are also doing something good. Um, in addition to what you all do. And um, another part that I want to say thank you that you, you saw many of our faces here, but there were more people that they helped us um, to, uh, to make this hackathon happen. Um, I want to give a shout out uh, to our extended team, which is um, Asim uh, and also Timos and also Lars Ulrich, that they really helped us to, to, uh, to actually to find all of these NGOs um, because that was that was also a really tough uh, tough job to in a, such a short notice to uh, to make sure that we created all of these challenges for you. So thank you very much to to all of you. And um, there is also we are going to make a, a code story about this um, this hackathon, which is a program that we run at Microsoft on on Channel Line. And uh, as a part of that, we really want to have um, um, some similar videos that you saw um, um, we display in the beginning of the um, the stream. Um, I will I will again I will put the and the um, um, the, uh, the criteria uh, in the chat. I really want you all to I um, mean the one that you want uh, <laughs> to participate <laughs> to. Uh, to actually to create these videos and sending them to us. And one last thing, and I promise it's going to be the last <laughs> one, is that of course we all want to hear from you. We want to have your feedback. We want to know that how did you, how did everything go for you as a participant of this hackathon. There will be a link shared in the Discord channel. Uh, please let us know because Obviously, we want to improve. Yes, I guess I covered everything. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Thanks, and, Sherry. Yeah, thank you. And for, thanks for joining us the whole week as well. It's been really nice to see your smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. I need to give a compliment to both of you as an amazing host. <laughs> and you. also, you both look really uh, good today. Thank you. Thank you. Rest Dressed up for the occasion. Yep. <laughs> you too. We should give a shout out to the rest of our team as well. Yeah. Um, so we have Magnus Sandemong who's worked on the marketing. We have Yimi who's worked as a project manager. Magdalena who's helped out as well with the design. And have I missed uh, anyone then? And yeah, then of course all our mentors. mentors yeah. who all are there. Yeah. yeah, all the people you've been meeting this week are obviously people from us and they've all joined in as mentors. So thanks yeah. and big shout out to them as well. Yeah. So I hope that everybody had fun and learned a lot of stuff. Yeah, I believe so. So it's it's real great. Great projects. We will publish, make this uh, <coughs> gallery of projects submitted projects uh, available in a few hours so you can check out this project uh, at the moment at the youtube live stream uh, links to uh, winners and runner-ups are posted as we were announcing it okay but and getting back to our oh, present we forgot to mention frederick Frederick, our producer we could not yeah. have done all these streams <laughs> without him yeah but Please, but they, frederick. <laughs> Very important one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we announced the winners once again. We would like you to join us for AI for Healthcare Hackathon. If you are for a challenge, will be a really interesting one running uh, April 21st uh, till May 15, three weeks. Uh, in those three weeks, there will be 
one day per week where there is a touch base with uh, mentors and the uh, rest you are free to organize on your own how you want to work uh, with your teams. In order to participate, you need to apply as a team and you need to provide some references on yeah. your work or uh, what you know about AI or healthcare or such. Uh, yeah, we've seen that we have uh, data analyst engineers uh, on this hackathon scientists, so why not to, to apply with the team? You already have team assembled. Uh, send application, see what happens. Uh, some really nice uh, partners also <coughs> joining NVIDIA, SAS, Women in AI. So it will be uh, great fun and uh, cases from real hospitals uh, across the Europe. And that was it. Yeah, yeah really, really great. Um, if you're celebrating Please use hashtag. Let's let us know. Uh, yeah, at least I will. He will also check the check the social media. Did someone posted the picture? Like, yay! Yeah. <laughs> so it was great fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Thanks you? for joining. Yeah, I, we have to go with a boom. I'm thinking. Like. So the <laughs> yeah. last one for all of us, and it's. Woo! So thank you so much for joining. It's been really fun. I think it's been a great yeah. learning experience for all of us, actually. I mean, we've learned so much as well, just speaking with the NGOs and looking at these solutions. So congrats to you all. You're all winners. We are as well. Everybody's providing help yeah. for the earth. So that's good. Yep. And hope to see you at the next uh, hackathon. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.